<sighs> Fittingly enough, the thing that has been going through my head pretty much every day for about two weeks now is this clip from Doctor Who. And I was having such a nice day. So, I'm at a point where I desire nothing in the world so much as never to have to think about anything even vaguely connected with a certain children's book series author ever again. And yet, because of so much other nonsense, whether it be uh, the mass reporting falsely of my TikTok account to the point that it got banned, whether it be the pile-on of comments on a short right here on YouTube to the tune of thousands a day, many of which flatly uh, saying that I should commit violence against myself. Uh, I'd really just love to not. But then there's the BBC. And while rolling will not be the main feature of this video, she does factor in, which again, just kind of adds to the sense that like, I really don't want to think about you. And people say we're obsessed with her. Good luck trying to escape her. If you are a trans person with a social media presence. Anyways, if you had not heard, the BBC has issued an apology in regards to an interview that took place on BBC Radio 4. The apology that they issued basically amounts to, we're sorry we didn't defend J.K. Rowling against accusations of being transphobic. The full context basically amounts to an interview that took place and the person being interviewed mentioned Rowling's transphobia, which despite all immediately available evidence should really not be a point of dispute anymore. If you want to side with her and say that you support what she says, that's your prerogative. But the continued denial that it even is transphobia is staggering at this point. And I am not going to turn this into a three hour plus thing trying to catalog it for your sake. If you want to do that, there is Jesse Gender's video, three and a half hours and well worth the watch. That's a more comprehensive thing. If you don't have three and a half hours, here's the time code of that video that actually specifically covers the major incidents that, again, really make this not a matter for debate. Now, it's also worth noting that when the guest on that radio show said that, the uh, host didn't just let it go. His words were, well, she wouldn't consider herself transphobic, which maybe she wouldn't. She would certainly claim publicly that she's not. That's her uh, official stance. Whether or not she actually believes that, that's a whole other argument that I absolutely am not delving into. But the reason I'm noting that is because there was not no challenge. There was a small pushback. Was it him stopping the interview dead and going, wait, I require that you absolutely lay out every point that proves that she is transphobic. Well, no, that would have been an absurd way to conduct an interview. But that's basically what the mountain of complaints have expressed should have happened. And many of them demanding that there now be equal time given to the opposite perspective, i.e. arguments that she isn't transphobic, despite reality. Again, this video, and the reason I feel the need to make it, is actually not about her at all. It's about the BBC. Because the BBC... <laughs> If you watch my Doctor Who content, you know that pretty much all of it starts with this warning at the front end. Because the BBC's been a problem for a while. Whether it be their 
platforming of a woman who literally called for trans genocide and even after removing her content from the article, not properly addressing the other fallacies and uh, inaccurate reporting contained within that article, ignoring the thousands of complaints sent in about various aspects of that article. There's a... Uh, that same pinned comment I mentioned is going to be down below this. So if you want to track that whole thing, there's your means to do so. But that was hardly an isolated incident. There was an article a few months back about Elon Musk's transgender daughter, and the second sentence of the article is her dead name, which, while the article was about her change in gender, her dead name is not relevant information. The fact that she has transitioned is all that needs to be said. The BBC has ignored calls for responsibility, protests. They have removed the Stonewall organization as a consultant to attempt to combat issues of discrepancy. They have forbade their employees from attending pride events. The BBC is already a mess, but with each new incident, it makes something harder for me. And that is to continue to talk about Doctor Who at all. Because while I will, often with some reluctance, continue to talk about J.K. Rowling, the figure, I don't talk about Harry Potter, the property, anymore. I used to have Harry Potter items up on this shelf, and they're not there. Uh, as I've said public, publicly elsewhere, I have not actually fully gotten rid of them, but they are packed away up in the attic, along with the books and the movies. The reason I haven't gotten rid of them is because pretty much all of them were gifts. So I have an emotional attachment from the people who gave them to me, people who actually know me and love me. But I can't look at any of it anymore, and I haven't talked about that kind of stuff in a long time. But I continue to talk about Doctor Who. Yes, with that warning at the front, but I do continue to talk about it. And it's starting to feel a little gross as the BBC completely cows, kowtows to a group of people not saying, how dare you fail to push back against someone calling J.K. Rowling transphobic, but saying, you didn't push back hard enough. The BBC is very much on their side in this issue, consistently. The news arm of the BBC virtually never advocates or presents evenly the pos positions on transphobia. Its coverage is virtually always weighted in favor of, of gender critical people like JK Rowling. But that's not enough. It's not enough that that position is favored. The gender critical movement of which JK Rowling is the biggest figurehead they want the BBC to advocate for their position, to argue their position, to argue their points for them on their broadcasts. And if they don't, to give them a platform to do it themselves. And the BBC has issued an apology for that, while that article that I mentioned before remains up with only the tiniest changes to it. The BBC <laughs> is on their side. And that's becoming more and more evident. So that brings me back to Doctor Who. I have continued to talk about Doctor Who with that warning at the front end. And honestly, it's distinctly possible that warning at the front end costs me views. There are probably people out there who see that warning and then turn the video off. Either because... Um, they are upset that I'm bringing attention to it or because they're sick of seeing it or what have you. Honestly, I'm sick of seeing it. I would love to never see it again. I would love not to have to keep putting it there. But I leave it there because it's what I have to do to not feel like garbage. Because I've talked about blatantly 
how continuing to promote Harry Potter related material is empowering transphobia. And that's simply because the owner of that IP, the person whose entire clout is based on being the creator of that, wields every ounce of clout and attention that grants her against trans people. And so whether you hold transphobic beliefs in your heart or not, and you may very well not, contributing to that property still empowers, as I said, the figurehead of transphobia in the UK. It just does. Regardless of your intent, regardless of your beliefs, regardless of who you are as a person. Buying Harry Potter stuff doesn't make you transphobic. It doesn't make you a bad person, but it is a contribution towards transphobia. I believe that very firmly. And I'm having to more closely examine Doctor Who. And it's not a one-to-one. There are lots of aspects that are actually quite different. For one thing, Rowling is a single person and her actions are incredibly clear. And she is the one person who will always benefit from everything with the Harry Potter name so long as she owns the, uh, the original IP rights to it. That will always be the case. This is always the person who will benefit from the money and the attention. The BBC is an organization with different people at the head. It can shift, it can change. It's this way now, it might be different in the future. One could argue JK Rowling might change, but I think it's far more likely for the heads of a corporation to be swapped out and for there to be a shift than for uh, any given individual to have a change of heart. But there's that. There's the fact that my issues are with the BBC News arm and not the BBC drama department where Doctor Who is produced. There's the fact that Russell T. Davis, current showrunner, is an outspoken trans ally. We're going to cut off the T. We're going to cut off the T. You can't have LGBT. We're going to cut LGB, cut off the T. To cut out the T is to kill. That is so helpful to see. And additionally muddying the waters, there's the fact that the BBC doesn't actually produce Doctor Who anymore. The BBC has moved production to Bad Wolf Studios, which is owned by Sony. And Disney is now in the mix because Disney is contributing some funds in exchange for uh, getting uh, the the broadcast streaming rights for Doctor Who going forward for the time being. And exactly how this potentially muddies the waters in terms of the income and the revenue generated by Doctor Who? Because one would imagine um, Sony through Bad Wolf Studio and Disney through because not only is it getting the streaming rights, it's contributing money. They're getting a piece of something. So that's less of it that's going directly to the BBC. These are all things that make it less of a straight line and less of a clear-cut situation than Harry Potter and Rowling. But I would be lying if I did not admit to a much simpler reality than that. I can't afford to not talk about Doctor Who. Doctor Who is what this channel is built on. It's what I talk about most often. And I took a hit to my income when I stopped talking about Harry Potter because those videos performed quite well. And while some might argue, well, you now make videos about JK Rowling, doesn't that replace it? Well, I used to habitually make videos on Harry Potter. I don't about JK Rowling because it's draining and I hate talking about it. So no, it's it's actually not equivocal. But there's also another aspect to that, which I'll get to in just a minute. But I have bills to pay. I have to eat. I have a kid. I have a kid I have to clothe and take care of. I have taxes I have to pay. And I cannot afford to simply drop Doctor Who from what I do here on YouTube. I won't lie, if I had another property that was viable for me to shift to focus on more, that was as reliable as the income I get from Doctor Who content, I would consider starting to shift that. But the other stuff that I talk about, when I talk about it, even the franchise stuff like Star Wars, Marvel, it doesn't perform as well. It performs decently enough, 
but not as well. Never has. So I can't afford that hit. Does that make me hypocritical? Probably. To the extent that anyone stuck in the global capitalist system is hypocritical by nature of a system that is designed to exploit. So when you try and stand up against exploitation and harm, you still have to contend with the fact that you are contributing to it in some way, possibly even contributing directly to the very kind of harm you're trying to stand up against. The thing is, the other stuff that performs well, it's one-off stuff. The video I did on Good Omens performed very well. I can't crank out a monthly uh, to weekly content about that. Marvel doesn't perform as well. Star Wars doesn't perform as well. Sandman performed very well when I covered that. Again, that was a one-off. I don't have something with the depth of content, the depth of stuff to be able to talk about, the wealth of material to draw from that performs as well for me as Doctor Who. The only thing that I do on this channel with any degree of consistency that performs better than Doctor Who is stuff about celebrity drama and scandal. And from a strictly business perspective, I could theoretically pivot to that. But that would make me hate my work. Because I don't like making those videos. And part of the reason I'm able to is, A, nine times out of 10, I am approaching them from the perspective of how does this impact the general PR, um, what projects are in the works, you know, the companies involved. I, I take a more PR and business focused view of it as opposed to a moralizing view more often than not. That's one way in which um, I square that. The other way is it's not the only thing I do. In between the times that I feel obligated to talk about people like Ezra Miller, Joss Whedon, John Barrowman, Amber Heard, and yes, J.K. Rowling, in between those, I get to talk about stuff that I love, like Doctor Who. Because I do still love this show, this property. I still have so much to explore within it. And the only thing that I could pivot to that would not completely tank my income would be to turn this into a full-time what's going on with this celebrity, ooh, what's the gossip, ooh, what's the buzz channel. And I would hate myself if I did that. I would hate what I do. And the privilege I have right now is that it, most of the time I love what I do. And Doctor Who is still a big part of loving what I do. I guess I'm just at a point where if Doctor Who were to ever be canceled, there's a part of me, that, well, there's the financial part of me that would panic, but there's another part of me that would be relieved because I will no longer have to worry about am I obligated to keep talking about this property or not. This video ultimately is me rambling, me letting you in, and me <sighs> not even justifying, I don't think, explaining. Because there is a difference between an explanation, a justification, and an excuse. And I'm not trying to make excuses for continuing to talk about a BBC property when the BBC continues to lean into, kowtow, and regurgitate gender-critical people and their talking points. But I still have to pay bills. I need to be able to sit down to do a work day and not dread it. This is the position that this system puts us in. The reason a phrase like no ethical consumption under capitalism exists it's not meant to be a doomer phrase. It's not meant to be a, oh, everything hurts someone, so why bother trying to do anything good, quote unquote. The purpose of that phrase is to point out how deeply intertwined all these things are. You want to try to avoid contributing to something that's going to do damage? Good luck. And Disney's involvement doesn't uncomplicate Doctor Who it makes it more complicated because Disney's got its own issues. 
I've got plenty of issues with Disney, but I also still talk about a lot of Disney owned stuff. Partially because I still enjoy it and I need to find enjoyment if I'm going to do this job. And partly because it's what people are interested in hearing from me. I don't have the degree of support on this platform, on Patreon, or anywhere to be able to say, I will not talk about Doctor Who anymore until such time as the BBC gets its act together, which frankly may never happen. So I'm stuck where I've been. The warning will continue to be there. This video will probably be added to the pinned comment that goes on those videos. I just needed to say out loud, it's getting harder. It's getting harder to be okay with this. And for anyone who is made uncomfortable by the fact that I continue to talk about Doctor Who because of all this, I get it. I'm uncomfortable about that. But my ability to break from it is limited. I don't know where all this goes. I'm not announcing and I will stop talking about Doctor Who on X date because, well, the simple fact is that when Doctor Who is in the news, that is some of my better performing stuff. And I don't have a surplus of income. I need what I get. It's all a mess. All of it. This is what happens. This is what twists things up. This is, honestly, in a lot of ways, what I was asking people to grapple with when I pointed out that buying Hogwarts Legacy would contribute to transphobia. And this is me grappling with that with the BBC. And what you determine on the other side of that grapple, that's on you. And obviously, I've given my indication of where I'm landing for the time being in regards to the BBC. And I know that grappling with these things sucks, but it's not healthy, individually or societally and communally, to just pretend the issue doesn't exist. That, that doesn't work. That's how we get into situations where people will shout and debate the simple fact that J.K. Rowling is transphobic and demand an apology that such a, such a basic statement of truth was not unchallenged vigorously. Well, here we are. And here we remain. I don't always have answers. Actually, I rarely have answers. But I'll still be here talking through the problems because it's part of how I move forward and keep doing what I do. Thank you very much for your time. Patreon is what supports this channel and enables me to cover my bills because while I can't afford to lose a huge chunk of my YouTube income, Patreon is far more um, reliable and a more significant chunk of my income than YouTube is. So if you really want to help me out, that is the way to do it. But even if you can't, there's links to other stuff below, other platforms that I'm on. Uh, assuming I haven't been banned on them following a, a string of false reportings. That's really only been a TikTok problem, but eh, who knows? But in any case, whatever your thoughts are on all this mess, drop them down in the comments and let's talk about it. Like, share, subscribe are also helpful if you haven't already done that. 
But what I really want you to remember, especially if you are trying to grapple with all of this, is that you are beautiful. You are valid. And you are loved. You are the council. I'm just running the meetings. And until next time, this council is adjourned. And now my thanks to my highest supporters on Patreon. Robin Moore, Zubin Lafula, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Oliver B, Melinda Walters, Emu Delki, Leo the Boyd, Becky Sparks, Fernabilax, the Poodle, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Tim Price, Adam R.D.L. Taylor, Shayla Gourlay, and Rosalind Bennett. Thanks for your support. And if you want to get your name in the credits, check out the rewards on the Patreon. <laughs>